A student reached out to me on Instagram about a teacher that assaulted him while he was streaming on Twitch. I sent a text message to his teacher asking her to give me a call because as a reporter, I have an ethical duty to give anyone accused of wrongdoing the opportunity to defend themselves. She didn't respond to my text message, so I called the principal. This is Kelly. Hi, my name is Marcus DePaul. I'm trying to reach uh, Mark Anderson about an assault that happened at your school um, in December of 2019. Hold on, please. Thank you for holding your call. Hi, this is Mark Andreessen, Principal of Mandan High School. I'm unable to come to the phone right now. If you want to leave a brief message and a return phone number, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. You may start your message now. Hi, Mark. My name is Marcus DiPaola. I'm a reporter. I'm trying to reach you uh, regarding an assault that happened. Uh, with, with Ms. Lee um, in December of 2019. If you could give me a call back at 609, I would be great, very, very grateful. My next step was to get her personnel file. I did this by filing an open records request, which I teach you how to do on my TikTok. I wanted to do this for two reasons. First, I want to see if they properly documented this incident to make sure that if it happened again, they'd be able to see that it was a pattern of behavior. Second, I wanted to see if she had already assaulted someone else in the past. Unfortunately, they didn't document it, so we don't know whether the student that contacted me was the first victim or one out of many victims. Hey, what's up? Hey, buddy, it's Marcus. How you feeling? Uh, just kidding. I didn't answer. Oh, you fucker. <laughs> I'm gonna text him. I'm gonna text him. Yeah, it looked on the video. It looks like she pinched you, and it looks like it's, it sounds like you you yelped in pain and you you know pulled away from her. Yeah, it it more like startled me than anything. I I mean, what is that is that normal? Have have teachers like touched you that way before? No. Okay, so this was pretty out of the ordinary. Yeah. When did you tell the principal about this? Did you tell your parents first or your principal first? Um, I didn't really tell anyone about it because I thought I was going to get in trouble. And then uh, everyone at school found out because it was on TikTok. And then uh, the principal got a hold of it and uh, he wanted to like take it to court because it was against FERPA and like um and privacy issues in the classroom. Okay. He said so that the teachers expect privacy in the classroom. Just just so you know, and I'm gonna look up this case law right now. Um expectation of privacy in the classroom. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, your principal was trying to prevent you from telling the police what happened. Uh, the principal was entirely wrong. There is no expectation of privacy in a classroom that was decided in 2017, long before this incident. Um, and I, I, I really want you to understand that it's completely unacceptable that the principal threatened you in this way after you, you, know, after you were assaulted by a teacher. Yeah. Um, do you remember generally when you told him? Like how long when after the incident the, was it? The, like the principal? Yeah. Um, I'd say it was like a week or two after we came back from Christmas break. Okay. And did you have any contact with the teacher after that? Uh, yeah, but I told my parents about it, and then uh, they just called me out of the classroom because I was dropping that class anyways. And they said that, because uh, this was after I talked to the principal, and then uh, they told me just to not go to that class anymore just because, like, my mom didn't want her to instigate anything and then me take it too far and get in trouble and this and that. So it actually sounds like the school recognized that she did something wrong, but wasn't willing to address that. Um, that's something that I'm going to bring up when I try and talk to the superintendent, and I'm gonna try and talk to him later today. This is Kelly. Hi, Mark Anderson, please. 
Is he expecting your call? Uh, no, this is Marcus DiPaola. Okay, could could you leave my voicemail? He's in a meeting right oh, now. Oh, sure. Okay, hold on. Hey, Mark, this is Marcus DiPaola, the reporter again. I'm calling about the incident uh, from last December where your teacher assaulted a student and instead of calling 911, you threatened to sue him for violating an expectation of privacy that quite literally does not exist. I'm going live with this story by the end of the week. Um, so if you could get back to me at 609, that would be great. Thanks so much. Bye. So I actually called the superintendent, but he was in a meeting. Then I sent him an email asking to speak with him about this incident. So maybe he could explain why they didn't call the police after the assault and why the principal threatened to sue the victim. He opened my email and I know this because I use an email tracker, but he didn't respond. And this happens in journalism sometimes. People who do bad things get away with it because other people help them cover it up and refuse to hold them accountable for their actions. Mandan, North Dakota is going to continue having a teacher on staff who was caught on video pinching a student's neck.